All right, hey guys, what's up? It's Wolf. You want to know how all my bitch are doing? Welcome to Devlog number thirty-two. So, welcome back. Yes. So this time we're working the capturing system. We're gonna be doing it things a little bit different. We're not gonna be using pokeballs or you know any type of like capturing thing. It's mostly gonna be creating paths, sort of like how anime uses like familiars as, as like an example there you go yeah it's basically like having a familiar so capturing them is not a thing it's mostly just taming them i guess that's the same thing as catching isn't it <laughs> so yeah we're taming them we're creating a pack and taming them and as for when the pack fails we're gonna call that a rejected path or the monster girl rejected the path you guys will see that during the devlog, which I will actually start now as I'm talking. So there's quite a few bugs that are going on, mostly just dialogue wise, like dialogue is duplicating like letters. It could be the font that I'm using. So that could also be an issue. I could always pick a different font. Yeah, I have no problem with that. But um, most of it is just dialogue. I added like a little bit of issue towards the capturing system towards the end, but I also have that listed inside of my books, so there's three bugs currently going on. And it's two of them are dialogue wise. So anywho, if it starts to interfere with anything further down the road, then I'll kind of put it higher on my list to fix like right away. So anywho, this is the magic seal that is going to be a placeholder that we're going to be using. I actually am kind of proud of myself for this devlog because I actually went off of the tutorial and started doing my own thing a little bit like he was adding animations for the pokeball i kind of figured out how t just from watching that of how to do my own capturing system which was actually which actually worked out really well to be honest it actually worked out really well i copied a few things that he did and i learned that i can make a lot of different animations with that dot between that dot tween little uh program that you can add for easier coding of images which was great definitely helped out a lot so now we're gonna be coding in the magic seal uh, we're gonna be changing the names quite a few times because I'm trying to figure out like what do I want to stick with with my coding what would be the easiest thing to tell the tell anybody I hire on Fiverr to change if I don't have the time to fix it myself but Anyhow, we're cast. This is the actual like animation wise getting it actually working. This isn't like. Hmm, how do I say? It? Well, this is the dialogue for like the start of it before we actually do the animations. So I changed it to form pat just because I felt like that would be easier. I was either thinking it was either going to be scrolls, sigils, no, either scrolls or some kind of magic items. I was thinking to myself, it could just be like charges. I'm sure I probably could use stones or scrolls as pat creators. So for this video, I had it on player because I was kind of copying him and seeing what would work and what would. I changed this to enemy so it pops up on an enemy instead of just, you know, throwing <laughs> the damn. Because <laughs> I was thinking about it, if if my character, if I just copy what this what uh, game dev experience is doing, I'm just going to be throwing the dang uh, seal. <laughs> at the enemy and capturing them. So like, I don't want to throw the seal. I just want it to appear on them. That would be a lot quicker than sitting through that other animation. And here's the issue that I was uh, talking about inside of my, uh, on my Twitter and inside of my YouTube community. This is where I forgot to turn back on my enemy and player units so they can show up in battle. Which I was confused at first of like what the heck is going on. So 
here's where we uh, actually end up fixing that after like a few minutes of head beating. And me trying to figure out what the heck's going on here. I was thinking it was this. Maybe that was named wrong. Maybe this. Maybe the symbols were named wrong. It's just like, no, it, it was none of that. And then I. Then I slowly looked through um, Google just to see if anybody else was having an issue. And if something doesn't show up, it could be that it's turned off. And the funny thing is, I actually didn't realize it. But if you click on something, on one of the errors, those little uh, yellow bars show up. I wonder if I can actually get it. It goes by so fast. And I can't slow it down on the... <laughs> DLC. Yeah, this. There it is. I didn't realize if you hover over them, it actually shows you like where some of these arrows could be and where I should look. And uh, this one was actually showing up inside of uh, the battle system every time I clicked on it. And I didn't realize that. So I could have easily found it inside the battle system if I would have just looked around. <laughs> so Unity actually does help you find that stuff, which is very helpful. And here's why I sit here trying to whack my brain, trying to figure out what the heck's going on. Just start looking it up. Then I just end the recording, start it back up as I figured out what the problem could be. Because I was thinking it was somewhere in here with the way it takes me to this area and yeah it wasn't in this area so coding can be very annoying when you do click on the error and it takes you to somewhere but it's not that that's causing the issue it's a totally different area so here's another issue this is what i was talking about the text being weird sometimes it could like i said it could be the font itself or it could be something coded wrong because I notice if I do it too fast, it does mess up. So it could be I need to have uh, so wait times. So probably wait four seconds. Coding could else could could fix it. It could. I could just have it to have like zero point five maybe. Then it interacts just to stop these little errors. It could be just because of speed. And I don't like the sigil being here because I would also have to change its layer to be under the dialogue and everything. And just having the sigil just cast from here to there would look weird, like I said. So I do change it and it looks a lot better towards the end. So here's the second startup. Where I do the sigil thing. And now I shrink it and I change it to anime. So I'm doing my own thing at this point. So I skip over a lot of coding that he's doing. And just put in the major things that I need. So here's a marking this for the animations and taming. I'm going to probably go back through and label a lot of things towards the end of the, towards the, end of the basics of the game. Just so I know where everything is. If you haven't used .tween and you want to like do like a lot of animations, simple animations with images, I, I recommend getting it. I say the pro version I thought about getting too, but .tween does help out like a lot. Keeps you from having to do like even longer tedious coding I've realized because I've looked around and seen like other ways of you know coding images and it's a lot more tedious so now we have the animations 
for taming. So now it recognizes it. Shows up. Now the monster girl is sucked into the seal. And now we're going to do the whole shaking system to where you guys know Pokeball shake when they're trying to like, you know, capture them. We're going to use the same formula as Pokemon for now. I do want to kind of change that formula down the road and just turn it into a percentage instead. So an actual percentage. There you go. It does three shakes and we're going to make it to where the fourth shake does capture. And there is a little bit of overlaps that you saw there. There was two seals on top of each other because I pushed it twice. I'm going to have to fix that as well. I'm going to have to open my notes up for that. There's going to be a lot of bugs I got to fix. Now this is where we're going to have the, the success and the fail coding going in. So using this formula for, you know, HP rate increasing and status increase. So it's like the lower the HP, the higher the catch rate. If it has a sleep or eye status on it, it gets a bonus as well, depending on the stat. But instead of catch rate, we're using tame rate because we're taming, not catching. Then again, like I said, it's, it's technically still catching. <laughs> is it? I don't know. It is probably. But yeah, we made the tame rate for it. Now we got to make the status bonus for it. And this is kind of one of the issues I ran into for the status. It's, for some reason, it kind of breaks earlier on. There's gonna be a lot of debugging we gotta do. So that's why once I do get the basics of the game going, I wanna get people, you know, being able to test it and help me find some bugs before I actually start doing like true changes and stuff like that, like map design and stuff. Cause like I said, we're gonna be doing 2D sprites and 3D worlds like everybody voted for. That's definitely something I wanna do. And now we're making the whole shake formula for if they break out or catching. I apologize. I'm kind of tired right now. <laughs> I, I stayed up for like for a while trying to figure out a few things for this. And now we're going to replace that with the minimum amount of shakes we can do before it gets caught. So it's going to go to a minimum of three shakes. Then if it goes to a fourth shake, the game will automatically tame the monster girl like Pokemon does.
And now we're going to make the animations for when the monster girl does get tamed. Now we got to remove the leftovers of uh, the form pat so it doesn't stay up after battle or continue to stay on when the battle is going on. And now we have to make it to where. So now we have to code it to where the taming fails and the monster girl goes straight back out of the seal and continues to fight. And here, uh, game dev told me, well, taught us that we can make several different messages for each shake, so you can know how close you were, <laughs> just just to just to hurt you mentally and emotionally, you know, very emotionally that you were so close to cat. No, I'm just kidding. <laughs> So now it's going to destroy the seal and keep the battle running. So the next turn is going to keep going if it fails. I was trying to find an easier way to get to, uh, different things. Then I was just like, screw it. I'll just find it inside of here because I don't have monster party up. So now we got to do the whole thing to where it adds the monster girl to the party. When you catch it. This is the one that had like a weird bug at the end to where I think I caught something that um, had a status effect on it and it broke. But when I tried to do it again and replicate it, it didn't happen again, which was the weird part. This is why I like keeping these uh, dev logs, just because if I do catch what's going on on as I'm recording it, I can keep a mental note of which dev log has that bug and I can go back and show it to uh, you know anybody that can you know teach me how to fix it And now we're keeping players from catching trainers, monsters. And that actually works out at the end. That actually works. And now we took away the whole pushing T to use the catching seal or using the form pat into an item and the bag will be a placeholder for that <laughs> oh god excuse me hiccups and as we use that item there you go so now we're going to use the bag instead of pushing t join the party and now there's an issue with the sizing that uh, game dev realized. And we have to add this coding to change it back to his local size once it breaks out. No, no, once we go into the next battle. Because the next battle keeps the same shrinkage or size for some reason. So now we got to make a duplicate layer for. Uh, no, we got to make a duplicate. Um, monster girl so this is going to be a copy of that monster girl that goes into your party that has its abilities and level so it's not like it's taking the exact monster girl out of that area it's going to be creating a copy of that monster girl and putting it into your party I think this is one of the error issues that I have. 
Yeah, it shows up here. I tried to catch something. Tried to catch something here. I think, yeah, I think I tried to put on a calm light, which I puts uh, uh, the enemy to sleep. And it bugged out here. It was a status effect thing. And this is where game dev actually came in and talked about this. I say you just put something out of place. That was pretty much it. I was trying to figure out myself because I thought I screwed up something. Now, if any status effect happens, it messes up. So we immediately started fixing that. I was thinking it was something with my text. Because at first I tried and fix it myself before I started looking it up. Or if I continue through the video and see if he actually finds it before me. Thankfully, the monster, the Pokemon that he was using, uh, knew said attack and caused the bug to show up. So that was perfect. So yeah, we had to call it from a different location instead of that location. Now that bug should be fixed and I'll have another bug towards the end and I try to catch another one so I changed to this one and there's a weird thing now for some reason her mana cost here for whatever moves is complete is like just zero I don't know if the move itself is broken because I didn't check back on it I just realized that it, it, it worked. She was in the party. That, that was all I was thinking about. And I got to remember that we called her while she was asleep and she's still asleep right now. So that works, but she's also full HP. So I'm thinking the game is trying to restore it back to the current, back to the um, battle state. And it's probably doing that. It's trying to refresh it once you catch it. It's like just copying plain straight up fresh stats and maybe that could be interfering with how it's you know catching a little bit it could be that because did we well actually did we do damage to the other one before we caught it i'm not sure but yeah fear tactic for some reason is is a complete red for some reason i don't understand how but we try to go through all of our monster girls deal some damage see what the issue could be we use quick tag and then this is where the bug comes in i think yeah and then my texts start getting weird after that then this is the main thing that happens all the time anytime i go into battle now this i don't understand what's going on here like i guess it could be the font but I'm not sure if it is the font. It could be something I coded in. And then this error comes into play. And then it freezes everything here. So there's something in my coding that is out of bounds. So it probably could be that too many monster girls died here or Probably the copy died and it's not processing right. It could be. So if anybody knows this error, because I go in here and just to make sure if it's anything that I can uh, look at inside of my coding, it doesn't show anything, but also it doesn't show anything that's in here. So it's nothing. Oh, wait, no. I saw that just for a second. It popped up something over here. It could be trainer. But it's taking me here. And I'm thinking that it's something in here. This, this has been happening a lot. So I might have to debug this area.
Oh, wait a minute. I think I know what it may it might be. But I'm not gonna I'm not gonna do it just because I know I I'll probably sound stupid. <laughs> I'm gonna try it later to see if it works. But then again, it doesn't show up again. That's that's the that's the weird issue. But that current going into wild bug with my text always happens now. So you're gonna have to ignore that for a while. But as I'm looking here, everything's working. The game is recognizing it that it goes in here. <laughs> Excuse me. Here. The game is making sure I'm not going over uh, six. Now I test to see if I can actually cast a monster on there. I cannot. And that is pretty much it. That has been the taming system. It was it was a real roller coaster trying to figure out the actual like catching part is over the animation. The animation part was actually a lot of fun until we got to the coding part of actually getting it to work. <laughs> but overall, I enjoyed myself with this one. And I'm going to leave it out there. I hope you guys enjoyed. I'll see you guys on the next one, which will more than likely be the XP system. But I don't want it to be like the older Pokemons, I want it to be like the whole party gets XP, you know, or distributed, but the person who is fighting gets a little bit more type type or ordeal, you know, that'd be that'd be great. Just ignore item share. <laughs> Nobody needs that. <laughs> but that's it. Peace out.